During the week, Russia tested Burevestnik and Poseidon, two developments that are changing the balance of power on the planet. The most interesting events will soon happen beyond Earth. Vladimir Putin announced on Wednesday that Burevestnik's technologies will be used in the lunar program. What are these technologies and what is their significance? We'll discuss in today's episode. We'll also talk about the new hero of the week after a brief summary of, of positive news. The first tests of the unmanned underwater vehicle Poseidon with its nuclear power unit activated have taken place. The upgraded MC-21 aircraft with Russian systems and engines made its first flight and joined the testing program in the Nizhny Novgorod region. Another Valde 45R hydrofoil vessel has been launched. In Moscow, production of construction structures has been opened. In Bashkiria, production of components for resource extraction equipment. In Udmurtia, production of zirconium oxynitrate powder. In the Kaluga region, production of hygiene products has been expanded. In the Ivanovo region, a new textile production complex has been launched. And in the Tomsk region, a dairy farm has been opened. Last week, Russia tested the Burevestnik Unlimited Range Cruise Missile, and this week, the Poseidon Underwater Drone. Both devices share the use of a nuclear power unit, which gives them the ability to remain in motion for almost unlimited periods of time. And this means that Burevestnik is capable of staying on standby in the air for as long as needed and attacking targets on command from unexpected directions not covered by air defense Forces. Unlike classic cruise missiles, it flies at low altitudes, which makes it even more difficult to detect and intercept. Poseidon, thanks to its ability to dive to a depth of a kilometer or more, as well as reach high speeds when necessary, becomes a true invisible force in the world's oceans. All these qualities are made possible by the use of an innovative nuclear core, which is the main technological mystery. Vladimir Putin stated that the Poseidon's reactor is comparable in power to that of a nuclear submarine, but is a thousand times smaller in size. That is the main secret. The fact is, both American and Soviet engineers have tried to solve this problem repeatedly. In the second half of the 1960s, the United States created the monstrous Pluto missile with a ramjet engine and a nuclear reactor of tremendous power. 600 megawatts. Our Burevestnik is much more compact and that's its advantage. Pluto was larger, heavier, and although hypothetically it could also stay in the air for an unlimited time, it never actually took off from the ground. The project was shut down. The American missile turned out to be too bulky and unwieldy, and because it used a ramjet engine, it would have left a significant radioactive trail behind it during flight and preparing it for launch took several hours which was already considered an unacceptable luxury in the event of war although nothing is really known for certain about the Burevestnik's reactor some conclusions can be drawn from the available data Vladimir Putin among other things emphasized that the nuclear reactor installed in the missile starts up within minutes and seconds. This is a fundamental difference from the developments of the last century. Based on this and other known facts, it can be concluded that the Burevestnik is equipped with a turbojet engine with a closed type fast neutron nuclear reactor. The coolant, which is probably molten sodium, this means that it really can be launched. It does not leave any radioactive exhaust during flight. And in case of landing in the ocean, the reactor's coolant will solidify and create a strong shell around the nuclear fuel, which will then allow the capsules to be safely retrieved from the water. Apparently, Poseidon also operates on a fast reactor with a sodium coolant. The military used the work of nuclear scientists we've featured in many episodes on our channel, the principle of operation at work. The operating principles of the Burevestnik installation and the Bolshoi-Natyazhnoi 
800 ground reactor at the Beloyarsk nuclear power plant in Sverdlovsk Oblast are the same. But it's one thing to have a stationary reactor and quite another to have one placed inside the body of an actively maneuvering missile flying at an altitude of several dozen meters and following the contours of the terrain. The fuel assemblies must be designed in such a way as to withstand inertia and turbulence without significant changes in the neutron flux during the reaction. In other words, the reactor must operate stably under any conditions for an extended period of time. How all of this was achieved is unknown. However, this opens up new possibilities. And here they are. Immediately after the tests of Borovesnik, there were many speculations that its technology could be used to create long-range aircraft. Let's not speculate, but rather turn to the words of the president, who clearly pointed out the real direction for the civilian application of this idea in the lunar program. Indeed, Russia and China have agreed to build a lunar base together, and it is our country that has taken on the task of creating its heart, a nuclear power plant. It is widely recognized that whoever builds the first nuclear power plant on the moon will become its master. After all, solar panels are ineffective during the long lunar night, which lasts 14 days, and providing them with batteries is expensive due to their heavy weight. That's why nuclear energy has no competition. However, no one in the world has a ready-made solution, including Russia. The main problem is that the reactor has to be miniature due to the same weight restrictions for payloads on modern rockets. Earlier, the head of Rosatom, Alexei Lakachev, said that the maximum weight of the nuclear unit cannot exceed 1,200 kildi, while its power should be 10 megawatts. In Russia, there is the lunar nuclear power plant project Selena, created on the basis of the maintenance-free self-regulating atomic thermoelectric station Elena AAEM. It was developed in the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, but they did not manage to complete it. Until this week, it seemed that this option was the most realistic of all possible ones. However, after the successful flight of Burovesnik and Putin's statement about using new technologies in the lunar program, everything looks somewhat different. Perhaps now we have an even more compact and powerful solution created based on military technologies. This is indirectly supported by the increased statements about Russia's participation in the lunar base project, which emerged this summer. For example, Mikhail Kovalchuk, president of the National Research Center Kurchatov Institute and first deputy prime minister Denis Manturov, discuss plans to prepare a nuclear power plant for delivery to the moon by 2030. It is possible that the technical solution was already understood several months ago. Otherwise, they would not have started promoting this topic. In any case, Russia has made a giant leap forward in the development of nuclear technologies, even though it was already ahead of the rest of the world in this field. Now, naturally, defense technologies are looking for applications in the civilian sector. And since international competition for the moon is intensifying right now, we have a chance to use our trump card and build the first extraterrestrial nuclear power plant. The events of the past week have sharply accelerated this process and we will keep you informed about further developments. By the way, some other good news from space arrived just the other day. Russian cosmonauts Sergei Ryzhikov and Alexei Zubritsky have, for the first time in history, grown perfect crystal structures in open space. We talked about this experiment in detail in the September issue, number 675. At that time, the Ekron M device was delivered to the International Space Station, and now its first product is ready. Creating thin crystalline structures in space requires extremely stable conditions and remains a challenging task for orbiters. Are you suggested? The mock-up modules are just decorative projectors, toolbox, ROSS, 
C-O-P-E-N-A-K-H-A-D-T-R-A-G-E. Experimental design work on the Russian reusable launch vehicle project, Corona. It will be able to put satellites into orbit, return spacecraft from space, and even carry out flights from one point on Earth to another in just a few minutes. Corona's launch mass is about 300 tons payload up to 6 tons, and each unit can be reused up to 100 times. Doesn't it have Burovesnik tech too? Who knows? Obviously, there are a lot of interesting things ahead. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything.